The job market is kind of weird these days. On the one hand, technology has made applying for jobs seemingly easier and more accessible. You can sit at home and search online for all jobs in your city, your state, or even your country. And you can do that all with just a few clicks. And there are some tools which even allow you to bulk submit your resume to hundreds of jobs in one shot. But yet, almost paradoxically, this ease has led to crazy levels of competition. Because not only is it easy for you to apply for hundreds of jobs, it's also just as easy for hundreds of other candidates to apply for hundreds of jobs. So this traditional advice of just apply for jobs online is kind of increasingly becoming ineffective because now we live in a world where hundreds if not thousands of applicants all apply for that same position online. So if you apply online, it feels like you're sending your resume into a black hole and nothing comes back out. Now, considering this scenario, how does one break through the noise? The answer, increasingly, lies in one word, which is referrals. It's like a well-known secret that having a referral can significantly boost your chances of landing a job. In fact, a referral doesn't just put your resume on top of the pile, it often ensures that your resume is even looked at by a human being in the first place. So here's a key question. If the essence of getting a job is increasingly about who you know rather than what you know, does this signal that it's no longer merit that gets you opportunities? Are we kind of heading towards the subtle acceptance of nepotism in the professional world. In this video, we're gonna dive deep into these aspects. We'll explore two important perspectives that you should be aware of, as well as some gray areas. And I won't just leave you there, I'll share my personal thoughts and recommendations on what you should be doing if you're in the market for a job. Okay, so everyone says networking is important as a professional. What exactly is networking? What exactly are you doing when you network? Well, at a fundamental level, networking refers to this act of building relationships and connections with other professionals, usually for career and business reasons. You aren't being their friend, you're being friendly, but you're not being their friend. There is this underlying context that this is a professional conversation, right? You meet new people, you have conversations, you exchange information and ideas. But one of the key benefits of networking is job search and the possibility of a referral. A referral in a professional setting typically occurs when one existing employee or a trusted contact recommends a candidate for a position within their organization, right? This recommendation is usually based on the referrer's belief that this candidate's qualifications or skills are suitable for that role. Referrals are generally viewed positively as they can help employers identify these potential candidates who have, at least to some degree, they've been pre-vetted through this referrer's endorsement. And in theory, nepotism is very different, isn't it? It carries a more negative connotation. It refers to this practice of favoring relatives or close friends and offering them jobs as opposed to someone who is more qualified. So unlike networking, nepotism is often viewed as an unfair practice, right? It prioritizes personal relationships over merit or qualifications, seen as a form of favoritism that can lead to perhaps unqualified candidates occupying positions of power or influence and potentially at the expense of more capable candidates. Now I wanna give a clarification here. Nepotism is usually referred to when you push your family members into favorable positions. There's another term called cronyism, which is where you push your friends. But for the sake of this video, I will just call it nepotism to include both nepotism and cronyism, okay? So networking versus nepotism. Is that distinction valid? Are these two entirely different? Well, yes and no. I'm gonna give you two perspectives here the disgruntled candidate's perspective and the hiring manager's perspective. From the candidate's perspective, the job search process can feel daunting and even unfair at times. I mean, think about it. You're tirelessly applying to numerous jobs online and you're hearing nothing back and it's easy to become discouraged. And then when you hear about somebody else getting hired due to an employee referral, that kind of desperation turns into feeling of resentment. The thought is maybe I was qualified enough for the job, but still another person got it because they just happened to know someone, right? That seems unfair in a way. Now you think, okay, I need to network. I need to grow my list of professional acquaintances so that they can help me when the need comes. 
because that's what everyone else is doing, right? So you go out and start attending networking events, join career groups, posting on Facebook and all that. And you start talking to everyone, trying to build a relationship with everyone, trying to get introduced to everyone so that you could get referred. Now, if you're an introvert like me, you probably get the pain of attending networking social events. Oh man, for the longest period of time, I used to be one of those guys who would attend a party and stand in the corner awkwardly not knowing what to do or who to talk to and if I happened to find someone who I could talk to I would kind of cling to them for dear life throughout the party so I wouldn't be found standing alone. All for what? For networking? Well let me tell you what I think about this kind of networking. So there is this dissonance of doing that and me considering myself as a software developer who is comfortable writing code and building applications, not making small talk. So why is this even necessary? Now, let's talk about why to this disgruntled candidate it feels unfair. One reason is that it creates the situation where those who already have connections are given preferential treatment. When someone has a connection, they automatically gain access to better opportunities without having to prove themselves worthy of those opportunities through talent. This type of favoritism kind of undermines the idea of equal opportunity for all. In this situation, you could have the smartest, most capable, most creative software developer, but this person wouldn't get a job because nobody bothered to look up their resume when they applied for an online job posting because they didn't have a referral. Often what also happens is that the person doing the recommendation doesn't even know the person that they're recommending well enough that they can actually honestly vouch for them. They might just be doing it because they need the referral bonus or any incentive that the company might have. Sometimes it's not even a direct networking relationship there because, I mean, who can check that? They just go by the referrer's word. And additionally, this phenomenon kind of disproportionately affects people who have certain personality types, like introverts who are not likely to have a good professional network. It's also unfair to certain demographics who are trying to break into industries that have historically had biases against them. So it's unfair. It feels like nepotism. It's more of who you know rather than what you know. So this is the candidate's perspective who dislikes the whole concept of referrals. Now, let's switch focus to the hiring manager's perspective. The hiring manager here thinks that the referrals are not only a good way to hire candidates, it's almost the only way the company can sustainably acquire candidates. It's almost impossible to do recruiting otherwise. So here's their perspective. Now think about this. Suppose you're the hiring manager or a recruiter and you have posted a job opening on an online forum or a website and you have 100 applicants, right? Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to filter through all those hundred resumes to find the best candidate? If you were to apply your own logic, you would say, well, there's no way I can look through every resume. Even if I were to filter out resumes that are interesting, but what then? How many are you going to actually have a phone conversation with? This is the curse of ease of application again. Candidates apply first and then think about the job later, right? They don't go look at each job description carefully, carefully considering it and then apply. Here are candidates bulk applying, and then they consider the opportunity only when somebody gets back to them from the company. So the hiring manager is thinking 90% of applicants don't read job descriptions anyway. What is a good way for me to filter out applications and find a way to make some applicants stand out that are likely to be safe bets to take on for further rounds of interviews? One strategy that many companies have taken is to prioritize referrals from current employees. If an existing employee who the company already likes and values, or else why would that person be employed, right? If the existing employee is vouching for a candidate, it means two things. That this candidate is probably qualified and likely to be a good quality candidate. Secondly, it gives the hiring manager an indication that this candidate is actually serious about this role and it's not like a bulk application that was done mindlessly. See, the recruitment process is a cost investment for the company. Several people in the company have to take several hours off of their job in order to evaluate the candidate. So this cost has to be spent wisely and for the right applicants. So the hiring manager is thinking, how can I be sure that this candidate is interested in this job? And where does this interest come from? Well, here's a candidate who knows someone from the company and they were talking to this person who was passionate and convincing enough for them to apply. So in this sense, 
referrals almost become like a pre-screening process for the company, right? The company can be more assured of the quality of the candidates. It saves time on screening applications from potentially unqualified individuals and also helps build trust between the potential hires and their future employers. If you were the hiring manager and you got two applications of equal qualifications, one is someone who you've never seen or heard of before, another with the equal qualifications comes with a good referral from a colleague who you trust and can vouch for their experience and quality of previous work, who are you gonna pick? So if you ask a hiring manager or recruiter, wait, isn't this nepotism because who you know matters more than what you know? Their answer is no, not nepotism, because guess what? This referral is a pre-screening or a filtering step. After that, the candidate is gonna be interviewed just like anyone would. They would have to clear the same interviews just like anyone else. Nepotism implies that the hiring decisions are influenced by personal relationships regardless of merit. Whereas referring employees within a company involves just the same assessment of skills and performance. With a referral, you genuinely believe that the person you're recommending is a good candidate and a good fit. It's nepotism if someone is hired regardless of their suitability, right? So they say it's not nepotism. Secondly, nepotism relates to advantages you are born with or you kind of marry into, right? The advantages of nepotism are handed to you. But networking is something that anyone can do. You can work on it. You can build your network. You can build your brand. You can make a name for yourself. So how is it unfair? So there are drawbacks. Yes, there might be some drawbacks associated with relying too heavily on referrals alone, such as missing out on great talent that doesn't come through a proper channel. But overall, they remain a valuable tool for businesses looking to fill positions quickly and efficiently. Okay, so that's the hiring manager's viewpoint. Now I've given you two contrasting viewpoints, right? The viewpoint of the disgruntled candidate who feels like networking is unfair, it's nepotism, it's cronyism and all that. And we have looked at the recruiter or a hiring manager's perspective who happens to see this as a fair and almost a necessary thing to do. Now you can draw your own conclusions about where you stand on this debate, of course, but I wanna share some of my thoughts on this matter. Firstly, I think that we humans are social creatures. We form connections with others naturally. We do it through shared experiences or shared interests. And these connections help us in various ways everywhere in life. And this has nothing to do with job searches, right? Well, you might debate about how much this should affect your success in job searches. There is a fact that this is a core part of human behavior. And networking is like an organic human tendency. It's been happening for ages and it'll continue to happen for ages. Secondly, I think of networking as an activity is a spectrum. It's not between two extremes of attending all the hip and happening tech conferences and professional mixers every night versus I don't go outside at all. I just sit at home and code and my only interaction with another human being is the pizza delivery person. No, it's not either or, it's a spectrum. As a professional, you work in teams with others, right? You're bound to have these social and interpersonal connections. And I think if you're a good engineer working in a team and building something, you're bound to have connections that can vouch for you. I just don't buy into the argument that there is a genius programmer and they are not with a job just because there's no one to refer them. Uh -uh. Good engineers will have people who would love to vouch for them, even if they don't have explicit networking skills and they don't directly go and network. In my experience, the genius engineers who don't get good referrals are often people who are a pain to work with, as brilliant an employee as they may be. I think referrals are useful because they provide additional information about potential hires beyond what can be inferred from the resume or interviews alone, such as work ethics or a culture fit, or just in general, how is it to work with this person eight hours a day, five days a week? This is important, right? And even if you're a fresher, you should have your friends who you've studied with who can refer you to the companies that they get into or the project work that you did or your internship. My point is, if you're good, it's natural that you will be known, you will be recognized and you will be referred. And you can increase your chances by socializing, of course, but it's never like an either or thing. And finally, I wanna come back to the point I started the video with. The sheer scale and numbers that are caused by online job applications today. 
there's just so many job postings and so many job applications. And whenever something increases in number so much, the value of it naturally decreases. I think this whole networking thing is a way for us humans to deal with this diminished value and to bring back something that has value. And the best thing that has value in this context is human referral, because that cannot be spammed or scaled by technology, at least not yet. I can apply to 300 jobs in one hour online, but I can't get 300 referrals, right? It has value for now. So my advice is don't hate the players, don't hate the game even. You're in the game and we've seen it's not good, it's not bad. So just the way it is, just play the game. And I do this while I play the YouTube game of saying, drop a comment and tell me what you think. No, seriously, this is a very polarizing topic. So I'm actually curious, what do you think? Where in this debate do you stand? Do you think it's nepotism or do you think it's a natural part of being a professional? Let me know in the comments. And also check out this video that YouTube has picked just for you. A recommendation from YouTube. YouTube thinks you'll like it. So click and see if it got it right.